differential pressure cells. Or a DP cell. How does that work? Let's see, you've got a you've got a port one, pressure one coming in there, and you've got a box here, and you've got another port. And what it does is it measures the difference between uh, two different pressure systems. And in between there, you've got a flexible diaphragm. P-H-R-A-G-M. If the pressure on this side is higher, it's going to flex the diaphragm this way. If the pressure on this side is higher, it's going to flex the diaphragm this way. Now, all you got to do is figure out a way to measure how much the diaphragm got flexed. And you can do it a few ways. Here's a simple one. I could put, on this side, I could put a strain gauge. Well, if uh, P1, if the, this pressure was higher, uh, the diaphragm would stretch this way. And the strain gauge would get stretched on the diaphragm and it would expand and the resistance would go up. If it got pressed the other way, if P2, if this side was higher, uh, it would fold this way and the diaphragm would, I mean the strain gauge would get compressed and the resistance would go down. So that's an easy way to do it. Um, I could use a piezoelectric crystal. If I had a piezoelectric crystal there, then what would happen is as it got stretched, if P1 was greater, it would get stretched, and, uh, and the piezoelectric crystal would get stretched and it produce a voltage. If it got compressed because P2 is higher, it would go this way and it produces the opposite voltage. Uh, and that's going to give you pretty fast measurements. That's nice. Um, uh, one more. Oh, well, two more. Potentiometer. Just so we can talk a little bit about potentiometers, it's a really nice tool. Uh, what it is is you can connect this to a needle to a variable resistor, and you can just make it a circuit. Let's see. Uh, here's an example. Notice this is a movable needle on a circuit and this is a resistor but what I can do is I can slide the needle along the resistor and as I slide the needle along the resistor if I go to the left the resistance decreases and the current goes up if I go to the right the resistance increases and the current goes down so I can get this mechanical signal I can hook this up a needle here so that the, the motion moves the needle and changes the resistance um, if you're looking at wind direction on a weather station usually what they have is a potentiometer as the vein moves around, it moves through, a, it changes the resistance, and so by the current that's coming through, you can tell what the wind direction is, down to the nearest degree if you've got a computer activated, a computer controlled weather station. Uh, one more option on these. DP cell. I can also take it and I can run it, uh, let's see, I'm just changing the shape, I mean, the orientation, that's no big deal. Put a hole there and a hole there. C1, C2. This is capacitance driven. What happens is this, this is a conducting plate and it's flexible. And these are two conducting plates too. So these are capacitors. Uh, a capacitance, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the properties of capacitance is, uh, well, one of the things that controls it is the distance between the plates. So if uh, if P1 is higher than P2, this flexible diaphragm is going to flex this way. And the distance between these plates is going to go down. And so the capacitance is going to increase on this side. It's going to decrease on this side. So you can compare them and you get very accurate readings. If uh, P2 is greater than P1, it's going to flex this way. It's an exaggeration. But now I've got less capacitance here, more capacitance here. And I can compare those capacitances and get a pretty good idea of how it works. Nice thing about DP cells 
is that you can, uh, they can send the signal off remotely, so you don't have to be there to watch it. Uh, they're rugged, you don't have to worry about whether they're standing straight up or an angle, which is what you'd have to do with a manometer. manometer. And they're, they're small, they're, sometimes they're like this big, it's very nice, or smaller. And what you can do is you can stick a DP cell in. If you've got a flow tube, you're trying to get speed. If you've got a flow tube, you can, uh, another use of them, besides just measuring differential pressure. I can have two ports here, and here's my flow, feeding into the DP cell. And across an orifice, there's a pressure drop, and it depends on how fast the flow is moving. So I can calibrate a DP cell, and not just to measure pressure difference, but to measure flow speed by the use of an orifice. Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of marine systems use these because they don't take up much time, they don't take up much space, they don't foul up like a, a turbine flow meter has to move, uh, and that can be a hassle. That's a, good, uh, that's a good fluid flow transducer. There are others, but this gives you a pretty good snippet at, at what's possible.